Hello. Right, one of the um, long-term problems we've had of this boat is with the electrics. Uh, pretty much all the electrics on the whole boat. Um, but in this episode, I'm going to be focusing specifically on the VHF. Uh, I've recorded this in reverse order because I'm an idiot and I forgot to record the start of the process. So basically, uh, this is our VHF radio, normally mounted up here. And for about, well, some time, uh, it started being intermittent, i.e. just switching itself off, and now it just won't switch on at all. Um, yeah, so basically, this is where we're at. Okay, step one. Got the VHF radio at home. I've got a 12-volt power supply. Okay, going to connect it up to 12-volt feed. So it's 12 volts. Phone, obviously. Right, hit output. I'm not expecting this to work. Hey! It is working, okay. Oh well, looks like I don't need to take it apart. Yep, okay, great. All right, then in that case, it must be an issue of the wiring on the boat. I guess that's the least shocking news ever. Oh well, back to the boat. Okay, after testing the radio at home, I've just got back down to the boat and it's absolutely glorious day. Uh, but never glorious inside Perrochet, of course. Um, so the radio fits back up there. Um, I'm predicting the wiring is going to need some tracing uh, and checking and the boat's just a complete state at the moment so I think first of all I'm going to do is get some of these cushions off the boat um, maybe put them into storage for a bit to dry out and just keep them out of the way so yeah I'm going to start with that and then trace the power lines back from where they come out here this is assuming it doesn't work uh, back to the battery uh, it always used to work without the boat turned on so I presume it's hardwired to the battery uh, whether or not it's fused or not we'll find out yeah okay low radio okay so it doesn't work but that's kind of reassuring because if it randomly started working uh, when I've not obviously fixed anything that would have been frustrating I will quickly turn the boat on first actually, just double check that it's not linked to that. Okay, boat is now on, and it still doesn't come on, which is what I expected. Okay, cool. Pop these off, and I'm going to put a multimeter across this. This isn't my multimeter, oh, and it's been left on, which I think means it's dead. Bugger. Yeah, dead. Oh well, I can still clear the boat out in preparation for that work. Oh man, the deeper I dig into this boat, the more terrifying it seems. Okay, so I've traced those wires. So these two here, um, behind this bulkhead, then they go into this kind of black cover. Then they go into this conduit. That conduit comes down here, runs through these lockers, comes out here, goes 90 degrees into the kind of battery compartment. And then kind of weirdly, it doesn't seem to be covered anymore, but I presume it's, it's this black and red. And then yeah, I'm guessing this is where it, it mounts directly to the battery. Um, I did find an inline fuse up behind the, uh, up in there. I checked that, it's intact. Uh, there were some joins to it which may not be intact. Um, yeah, so it seems to all be connected. Without that multimeter working, uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult to resolve. So I guess I'm just going to have to give a, a quick visual on the condition of the connections. And then, yeah, really come back when I've got a multimeter. But I'm going to have a little play around, see whether I can find anything obvious first. I mean, look, I mean, 
what even <laughs> is that supposed to be connected to anything it's just a wire coming out of that conduit it looks like it's been clean snipped but hey, look at the state of this locker look at the state of the wiring everywhere on this boat it's just ridiculous it's crazy okay well that was a bit of a failure i've done all the wiggling i can everything actually looks okay uh there's a chance it's this dodgy chalky block connector next to the inline fuse um but without a multimeter i'm kind of wasting my time so and i've run out of time since my lunch hour so i'm gonna go home um and next time i come down i'll bring a multimeter trace that properly i think what i'm gonna do is maybe try and diagram out where all the wiring goes which is just going to be an outrageous task because it's just a bloodbath anyway okay today is not going well this is like the third time i've had to film this okay so oh man right i've disconnected the radio i've got my multimeter and I'm gonna check we've got voltage at the supply for the radio. Okay, it's... Yeah, it's kind of a bit weird. It's saying I do have voltage, but it just suddenly goes really high and then cuts out. So I think there is an issue there. So, first port of call will be check this chalky block. I stripped the insulation back just prior to the the amalgamating tape off it and I can see that it's rusty uh, particularly on negative side so I'm going to check for continuity in the circuit so we're on the negative wire I'm just going to prod the screw above the negative so that one's saying nothing and the back one also nothing and if we try the same with the positive side, okay, we get a reading, which is what we'd expect, a low resistance reading. So shows there's a circuit on the positive side, not on the negative. So I think what I'm going to do is chop this chalky block out because it's clearly knackered on one side. And so it's only a matter of time before it goes the other side. And um, yeah, replace it. Okay, so what I'm using are these, um, don't even know what they're called, solder seal wire connectors. So they have like a bit of solder in the middle with a kind of heat shrink around it. And um, what you do is you put your wires together. Well, I'll show you. And then you cover them with, with this connector. You're supposed to twist them together, I think. But Sorry, terrible camera angle, no doubt. But effectively, you push the connector over the joint, leaving the uninsulated bit under the solder, obviously. And um, then you use a little heat gun or equivalent. So this is a little kind of Dremel, I don't know what you'd call it, heat tool. So it can be a soldering iron um, or a tiny, tiny blowtorch. Yeah, it's really handy, actually. And obviously, it's gas-powered. So... The key is trying not to cook it. So it's trying not to damage the insulation behind, which I clearly am. Yeah, it's probably not the best job ever. Um, I think I've overheated it a bit, but I could see the solder start to run over the wires. It does say in the instructions for this thing that there might be a ring of solder left at the end of it and not to go too mad trying to, uh, trying to melt it. So I think I'm probably pushing my limit there. Anyway, let's do the negative side. Okay, so <clears throat> I've just cut the earth side, not earth side, negative side. You can see it's all black, not shiny at all. So 
it looks like that is the cause of the problem. In fact, actually looking at this side, it's not it's not super shiny there either. So I'm gonna cut that a bit further back. See if we can get some uh, wire that's in better condition. Still black. I mean, that's starting to get a bit better, but it's still a bit crappy. Yeah, that's better. Let me take another one of these, thread it onto the wire. Okay. I'm not really sure if I've just cooked that or not. Right, the big reveal. Has it worked? First off, I'm gonna put the voltmeter back on. Okay, so voltmeter onto the negative, onto the positive. Negative on. On. No, it didn't sodding work. Um, excellent. Okay, there is a fuse. I have checked this fuse before and it was fine. At least it looks fine. If I bypass the fuse. Still doesn't come on. How bizarre. Check the boat has power. Okay, there it is. Voltmeter is reading whatever that is. 12 and a half volts ish. Yay, electronics. So that was a complete failure. Um, the fuse is fine. I think these connections are going to be fine. I mean, even if they had no solder, the wires are, if nothing else, pushed together. Um, I put the multimeter across these and it was still reading crazy readings. So yeah, I've just checked the voltage on the boat and it's at about 12 and a half, 13 volts. <sighs> Electrics. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> this is like the third time today I've recorded uh, a shot with no audio. I've left the microphone off, so I'm gonna try again. Even though I know the answer now. Right, okay, I came down here earlier today and I uh, completely failed, obviously, to repair the wiring here and get a good voltage reading to the radio. Um, so, what I've done is I have Obviously I took a, a reading off the voltmeter on the boat and that said the battery's good. But I put the multimeter across the battery and it did that crazy thing it did over there where it says it's not 12 volts, <clears throat> it's not 14, it's like it goes up to like 19 and just cuts out basically. So I don't really trust the voltmeter in that multimeter at the moment. Um, Okay, I think I know why I don't trust the voltmeter. Um, I changed the battery in this just the other day because it was dead and I put a half dead battery in and that half dead battery now appears to be fully dead. So it must have just been on the way out. Okay, right. You're gonna have to trust me on what I've already measured. The reading across the battery was crazy, but I assume it's okay. I stuck the, um, I did a continuity test, so I set this to resistance and I stuck this um, probe onto the negative terminal and I stuck it onto the negative wire of this, extended with a crocodile clip because I'm ghetto and um, it read fine. It said 0 0.005, so it's reading continuity between them. 
and I thought the negative wire was where the problem was. I just stuck it on the positive terminal and when I went to measure across to the positive of this side there was no continuity. So the problem is somewhere in the positive line. Um, I can't remember if I've recorded this bit or not so I'm going to say it again before you run out of battery. Uh, when I um, spliced in to this um, bit of wiring earlier and I took the chalky block connector out I should have measured the voltage then before making the new connection that would have been the sensible thing to do but I didn't uh, so yeah what do I do now I've, I've got an issue somewhere between um, the battery here and up to there uh, oh, I'm such an idiot um, Right, what to do then? Either clean up this connector here, maybe it's that, I don't think it's going to be that though. Or I check um, at the battery side, I think that's what I'm going to start with. The problem is it's not particularly accessible and all the wires go into, into this kind of conduit stuff. Uh, so I don't know if there's any other connections in that, you would hope not. Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is just try and try and check the connections on top of the battery and um, yeah, see what happens. I don't really know what to do. Losing the multimeter is, is a massive pain. Yeah, my own stupid fault. It is a windy night. age-old test. Tap wires the ever, no sparks. Okay. Okay, now I have audio. I've done like another clip without audio. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, in the absence of multimeter, I'm going to just hardwire the radio to the battery with these crocodile clip connection things and double check it comes on. It should come on because, as we saw earlier, it works at home. So, Bosch, it comes on. Happy days. Turn it back off. Right, now what I'm going to try is I'm going to take the positive from the loom on the boat where it would normally be connected and I'll leave the negative connected directly to the battery. Now I am not expecting this to work because I think the positive side of that is dead. Yay, it doesn't work. Okay, so now if I go back to the battery with positive. And then, what am I doing? Yeah, to the loom with a negative. I'm hoping this will work. Yes, okay, great. I've worked out a thing. Now I just don't know what to do about it. Okay, so, I mean, that helps in some respects. Now I need to trace between the positive on the battery and this wire here and find a fault. The fuse is on that line, but I bypassed the fuse earlier and that didn't help. So I might just do that straight off the fuse. Okay. Okay, so 12 volts is not getting to the fuse. Ugh, I can't remember if my join is upstream or downstream of that. Uh, it's downstream of them. Okay. Ah! Another connection. Another connection? I think I found another connection. Okay, I don't know how clearly this is coming up on the camera, but further downstream, so before it goes into this big bit of black insulated cable and into the abyss, where I hope there aren't any further joins, uh, there appears to be some kind of connection. Oh yeah, okay, so there's a bit of heat shrink over this. So something is hiding under here. So I'm gonna have a look at that. 
Yep, definitely some connections. Right, so it's a positive that we think is a problem. Uh, oh, that'll do it. Um, oh, isn't it great when you find an obvious cause for a problem? Oh, oh, I put the microphone on. Oh my god. Oh, I have. Thank the Lord. So I wasn't going to stick that back together, was I? Um, right, well that is amazing. So, snippity snip, back to good wire. Snippity snip, I mean that is completely green in there. I, I don't even know what that was. But it is not happy. Right, so, repeat the earlier job. It's not the brightest copper in the world, so I'm gonna... I might as well take that back a bit because I have I have cable to play with. But I do find when you get that kind of oxidization on electrical wiring, it can travel a fair way down the, down the wire. I presume it's water damage. I don't really know. It's slightly better. Okay, keep shrink on. Now this side, see how far back, oh man. It's, uh, again, I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's just literally completely green. Okay. Now it looks copper colored again. So we've had to lose a fair bit of that. Oh, I'm getting the excitement that I might actually achieve something tonight. anyone that's an actual electrician or has any idea what they're doing apologies um, I'm sure I'm butchering this slide that on try and bond these as best I can do a bad job of it slide that over now we get our little torch. Okay, I can see the solder has flowed through that. All right then. No more crocodile clips required, I optimistically claim. Moment of truth, number 768. Uh, so, positive arm. Yes! <sighs> Relief. Relief mainly because I've got so many more jobs to do. Like, electrics wise, the whole main breaker box is just screwed, needs resoldering. Um, I'm going to try and take a bit of that home tonight to get on that. The motor still does that irritating thing where the relay clicks, but it's presumably not getting enough current to turn it over, so I'm guessing I'm going to need to clean up some connections there. So this is just one of the three electrical jobs, three being optimistic, and then you know, the rest of the boat, the water issues, the rigging, etc. So I'm glad this is done. Oh God, what have I done? Uh, so I... <laughs> Before I put the radio back on, I was uh, trying to see whether there was any uh, connection from the GPMS to the, whatever it is, NMEA input on here for like the distress signaling. So I started tracing cables back and just look at the amount of stuff that's just come out of here. It's crazy. What even is this? Why is there so much of it? Okay, so... We've got some outside speaker, well, an outside speaker on the boat, which used to be hooked into the radio. And um, shortly after we bought the boat, it stopped working. Um, and I think I 
finally worked out which cable it is. So, yeah, happy about that. I mean, from a cruising perspective, it's one thing. For, from a racing perspective, especially if you're short-handed, um, they tend to read out the course uh, over radio shortly before the start of the race. And if there's only two of you on the boat and you're not perhaps fully ready to go, um, it's quite a pain to send somebody down below to listen to the course. Um, so yeah, it'd be really helpful to have that back. So I'm trying to remake the connections for that at the moment. I did hear a radio message come through just before. So the radio is definitely working, which is good. Yeah, I discovered there was a, a speaker output on the radio, um, which confirmed that I wasn't going crazy. Okay, so power's back on the radio, um, the VHF antenna's back into it, and I've connected the external speaker back up to it. Um, haven't had a chance to test that now, and I'm about to call it a night, but yeah, happy days. That is, that is a good thing.